Hey everybody, and welcome to Showcase, where we show some of the best projects produced by electronic media majors and speak with some of their creators. Coming up on this premiere episode, we see what it's like to be an electronic media major. We also have a short noir film and a music video. Let's, Let's get, get rolling! rolling. Welcome to Showcase, the show that shows off electronic media major's best work. I'm Frank Kozel, and boy, am I happy to be here. And I'm Kyle Ashenfelder, and I love professional wrestling. Anyway, our first video demonstrates how being an electronic media major isn't always easy, although it is a lot of fun, and we do make some great projects. It was created by junior Courtney Massa for video field production, and not only is it entertaining, but it gives a fantastic look at behind the scenes of some of our facilities. It also featured electronic media majors Megan Black, Dustin Seiler, Parker Barossa, Peggy Williams, Liz Martin, and Steve Bast. Let's take a look at a day in the life of a stressed out electronic media major. Cue it. Hey Dustin. So I need to run out the camera. We're all out. What do you mean they're all out? My project's due tomorrow, Dustin. Let me check again. Better check again. Actually, we do have one available that you can use. Oh, thank God. montages on. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yep. That's happened to me once or twice. God, some girl wanted me to open the door for her. I'm trying to watch Ellen. Jeez. Put it up with this stuff. Hey, uh, I signed out. Excuse me, five. Parker. Oh. God. Oh, oh, God. I walked all the way to my apartment with all this equipment and there was no P2 card. No P2 card. Can someone explain? Tell her, Dusty. Tell her. You mean this P2 card? You two are the most ignorant people I've ever met in my entire life. That's like a compliment, right? You're ignorant. I wish I could anchor on between the lines. That Melissa Kelly is just such an inspiration. What do you think Bieber would think if I handed this in? You know you can't delete that, right? Oh my god. What do you mean I can't undo? Redo? No! Oh my god. And then you can find it? What? Eight minutes okay. of rendering? Why does this always go offline? Oh my god. For the last time, Parker, it's Moab, not Moab. Castle Rock, Parker Barasa, take 87. <clears throat> I'm freaking out about this intro test. Freaking out. Yeah. Intro test? Yeah, we have a test today. There's a test today? Yeah, Parker, Parker. come on. She's... Right. Steve, how many times have you taken this? I'm like six or seven, kind of lost count after five. So, it's gonna win. Hopefully I know it all by now, but you know, it's whatever. It's pointless. There's really not a test today. It's no, there is. there is. I know the schedule by heart by now. Hmm. 
You guys ready down there? We're about to start. Yeah. No, 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 in the studio. You guys ready in the studio? Yes. No, not in the control room, in the studio. All right, okay, I'll, I'll take that silence as a yes. We're, we're gonna get ready. All right, take camera one. Cam, take, take camera one. Take camera, take camera one! <laughs> God, I'm sorry. What is that? I have to get so angry. I've had a really long day. Take camera one. It's a one. rough life being an EM major. Take, Did you know that? Take it, take it. Jesus, okay. Where did the couch go? <sighs> so is Ross on his way now? Yeah, the musical guest is at six, right? Okay, do we need to tell her? Nah. So Frank, what did you think of this Academy Award winning <laughs> worthy video? Uh, I thought it was fantastic for what it is. I mean, it's uh, basically done entirely in the camera. There's no editing software involved. Yeah. And I mean, I think it really does a great job of uh, showing how difficult it is to be an electronic Oh yeah, yeah. I think it's absolutely accurate. I mean, the part where they're, where she's sitting there and it's rendering, that's annoying. I hate that. It's, it's the terrible. worst thing ever. You're sitting there and you're trying to get the video done and you're just rendering and you got to sit there and take a nap because it's it that goes long. offline and they're like uh -huh. Why? yeah and then edit share <laughs> hate edit share everyone hates edit share right am i right am yeah. i right <laughs> i hate it why right? not you know um but no like i said it, i think it does a real uh good job of showing off i feel a lot of people kind of uh don't take our major necessarily seriously because they hear electronic media and they think we sit around and watch a TV all day or exactly. watch movies, which is not the case. Not true. It's, it's not, not true. true. It's not true. Do it's not, not underestimate true. us. We are very powerful people. We're very powerful people. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of hard work, you know, and there's a lot that goes into it. And I think this does a fantastic job of showing that. And yeah. there's a lot of all-stars. Yeah. I feel like from the department. Dustin Seiler, he's our, fee our uh, manager or manager. stage manager. Or? He's a beautiful man as well. Yeah. So, Fantastic. Oh, yeah, he's a be very beautiful man. And so is Courtney Massa. She's a very beautiful woman. Why wasn't she in this video? Well, Come on, Courtney. You should have put yourself in this video. You're gorgeous. Come all on. I'm saying is call me. You have my number. <laughs> Frank, she's out of your league. Ouch. Well, speaking of that video, I had a chance to sit down with Courtney and talk to her about her project and even got to see some of her shooting locations. Well, let's take a look. Hey everybody, we are live here in Rickenbach Learning Center and I'm here with Courtney Massa. She was the creator of A Day in the Life of a Stressed Out Electronic Media Major and we are here to ask her some questions about her video. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you Kyle? I'm very good. good. To start off, I just wanna know, what was your overall purpose of this video? What was your main purpose you wanted to do? Like, well, when Professor Bieber assigned the um, video, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, and um, I tried to pick the thing that was most familiar to me, and that was a day in the life of a stressed out EM student. So. Very true, very true, very familiar, absolutely. <laughs> um, what inspired you to to do this? What was Were you having a bad week with the major, or was it? Um, it was know? more like a stressful semester. Um, a lot of things were going on. It was just really stressful, so I thought, why not make a video about it? Okay, cool, yeah. cool. Um, how did you come up with the individual scenes? Were they were they actually events that happened in your life, or or did you just hear them from friends? Or well, it was a little bit of both. Um, definitely with the intro test, I think everyone had experienced that because we all had to go through that. Oh, yeah. um, but with the audio, everyone had to go through that class and. Um, a lot of my friends gave input, but mostly it was my own experience. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I've had many of the same experiences as well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Um, out of all the scenes in the video, which one was your favorite to do, and why was it your favorite? My favorite would have to be the one where Megan is lugging all the equipment. She has the tripod, the uh, lighting kit, the camera. Um, 
it's funny because it's happened to me and I've seen it happen <laughs> and it was just really fun to shoot and watch her watch her it sounds bad watch her struggle but yeah. <laughs> it was it was it, a good time it was only a video <laughs> it's only a video <laughs> um, what did now I know I understand that for this project you weren't really able to edit it was actually Correct. required that you did not right how what were some difficulties that you came across not being able to edit um, the only difficulty I can really think of is that we would have to redo the entire scene again if we messed up so um, you know you usually would keep the camera rolling and you just fix it in post but you had to totally redo it this time and I mean we didn't really have that much trouble with that but it was a hassle I yeah, understand um, were there any particular uh, particular reasons behind some of the shots you used uh, I noticed the one uh, it's actually right before this scene uh, where uh, Megan is in the control room and used a shot where you had the camera. It seemed like you had the camera sitting on the desk right by the mm -hmm. right by the uh, video switcher. Mm -hmm. Was there a certain reason for some of these shots, or um, I tried to spice it up a little bit and you know get the creative angle and make it a little more personal. Um, but the shots are really just based on experience and what I went through. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I noticed that all of the talent in this video. I mean, this is a great shot to, to <laughs> demonstrate it. Uh, it was all electronic media majors. Right. Uh, so when it came to picking talent, did you just uh, did you just want to pick electronic media majors to do it, mm -hmm. or did you have any certain method? Well, I actually just started out with Megan being my only um, talent. But um, as I went around the building, people saw what I was doing, and they wanted to help out because they had experienced the same exact oh, yeah. things. I'm like, oh, I want to help with that. So the more the merrier, and it, and it worked out really well. I think it, it came out nice. It was my favorite scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, the intro, the yeah. intro <laughs> test scene. Um, so out of all the problems that you depicted in the video, mm -hmm. which one do you feel happens the most to you or others that you know or is most irritating to you? Well, the one that happens the most would probably be what Megan faced with all the equipment, especially now being in the higher level courses. I have a lot more projects to do, so lugging that equipment is definitely not fun. No. But the most irritating would definitely have to be those intro tests. I can't, I can't get past that. That was brutal for me. That really, that did me in. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now that you got this, this one was past done. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you working on now? What's your What's your uh, repertoire? Well, right now I'm very busy with Newsbreak, which is the on-campus TV show. It airs every Tuesday and Thursday at 7, 7.30. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my time goes into that. We're totally revamping it this year, so we're trying to make it a little bit better. Um, that's a lot of work, but I'm also involved with Between the Lines and the Invent and Doc class, so I'm definitely keeping busy. Well, folks, that's all we have for this interview. Thank you for coming and uh, letting uh, me talk to you. Thank you for having and, me. Yep, uh, and good luck in, whatever you, in what you're doing with Thank Newsbreak you. and Between the Lines. Thank you. And back to me and Frank in the studio. Thanks. You need anything else? No, I'm good. Scarlet, you came. Of 
course I made it, Martin. The train ticket was well worth every penny just to see your sorry sight. To do this civilly, or make a mess of our favorite diner? Now, Martin, you know that won't accomplish anything. The only reason I agreed to meet you here is because you have the code to the safe we stole from the Vanderbilts. Just like how the only reason you came was because I know where half of your loot is. You're damn right that's why I'm here. So how do we want to do this? This is what we're going to do, Martin. First of all, you're going to go to the counter and buy me dinner. Fine. You sit tight. Excuse me, miss. The lady over there wants the cheapest thing you have in your menu. Excuse me, sir. Your change? Keep it. You don't trust me, Marty? I've never been much of the trusting type, Scar. Then I trust you're enjoying the coffee? Give me the combination and I'll give you the anecdote. <laughs> you only have a minute before it reaches the brain, Marty. Time is of the essence. Good boy, Martin. Here, you deserve it. It's just water. We have Ross Wood, the writer and star of Blackbird Diner, with us. How are you, Ross? I'm doing very well, Frank. Thanks for having me on, by the yeah, way. No problem. First episode, you know. Yeah. I thought we'd start it off with a bang. Great person to have on. So, oh, you know. yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's an honor to be here. Premier episode. Yeah. Yeah. All right. uh, now, this is a unique opportunity that you had here with Blackbird Diner. Uh, essentially, what you did is you had just written the script and then kind of sent it off to somebody else to produce, which is kind of almost unheard of. Uh, in our major. Now, how did this come up about? Well, it came about really, <clears throat> I'd have to say, uh, one day I was walking down the hallway and uh, Kara Cotteles, who's uh, it's kind of my uh, advisor here and she's been involved with so many projects. Love her, love her. A great person. A great person. Uh, she came up to me and she said, Ross, she's like, I need a script. And I'm like, what? She's like, I need a script for a class <laughs> I'm doing. And I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's like, but you know, it has to be short, you know, it has to be easy to do. I'm like, well, I don't really have anything like that, but right. I, could, I could look. So I was going through some stuff I had, and I found this really old short story I did. It was um, something I did really quickly. It was actually kind of to test how quickly I could do a short story and, and with some you know, imagination and some, right, yeah. some ideas. Uh, so I did it maybe in an hour, uh, the original story, and it was a short story format. Um, and I was like, well, this could work. I was reading through it. You know, this is kind of cool, mm -hmm. uh, and they could do a lot with it. Um, and so I adapted it into a script format, and I sent it to her, and she's like, this is perfect, you know, we can do so much with this. Uh, and then it really went from there. Um, and so it was a great project to really kind of get involved with. Now, what was your inspiration for this, uh, for this script? Story? Yeah, the inspiration uh, for this one, I'd have to say, uh, I've always been enamored with kind of 40s, the 50s kind of time period. Right. Uh, and that kind of uh, the film noir style of shadows and this mystery and detectives trying to find out uh, solving mysteries. Um, so I've always really enjoyed that genre. Um, so I wanted to take something that would kind of highlight that, highlight that in the best way possible, and I think this did that. Now, this story seems to be uniquely structured in that, like you said, it, it looks almost as if you were to open up a pulp magazine and kind of just choose a page and read that, and I kind of feel like that's like, I was a little like, oh wow, this is so cool. So like, uh, was that something you were trying to do or what, uh, make it more open-ended on both sides? Yeah, or? yeah well, I, I definitely uh, liked where, where you went. I didn't even think about it, but it's definitely like a pulp magazine in that right. kind of way. It's, you know, the 40s, kind of that genre, uh, and it's open-ended, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Um, but I, I'd like to do that. Uh, I feel that it's best to write scripts in a way that the audience isn't really spoon-fed the information or the plot. 
it's where they can pick it up and kind of, you know, how does it end? You know, they can like, yeah. oh, I think it ends like this. I could think it ends like Let this. Let their imagination run wild, yeah. pretty much. And that's kind of like what the cinema, I think, should be like. You know, the audience gets to to make it really their own, personalize yeah. it, and really enjoy it. That I think that's the most way. Nah, I agree with that 100. percent It's really yeah. cool to see like characters kind of to think that they live on outside of the movie. And when you do something like you did, it definitely gives that effect. Mm -hmm. But uh, for writing now, it's, it's a very difficult thing. I know, because I'm an aspiring writer, and what I mean by that is that I just like to think that I want to write, but I've never actually <laughs> written. It's a very difficult thing to do, as I'm sure you know. Yeah. And now, see, I'm the type of person that looks at a blank uh, screen, and I can't, I can't get past it. So do you have a way of doing that? Like, what, what's your style? How do, you, how do you go about doing that? Yeah, and I think that happens to a lot of people. They mm -hmm. look at this, and I've had it even, too. I have to, and I think it happens when you're kind of forced upon it, you know, right, yeah. or you sit down and you're like, okay, I'm going to write something, and I don't think that's the best way to look at it. You know, you look at it, that blank screen, and you're like, oh, what should I write? You know, I, it's hardest to do that that way. Right. Um, how I like to do it is that um, it comes to me really that day and that hour, you mm -hmm. know. I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. You know, I could have this and that, uh, and then when I start writing it, it kind of all just falls into place. Um, I'm not sure how it really works that way, but um, I'll be sitting down, maybe, and it happens in the worst place, too. I'll be in a classroom. Of course, yeah. Yeah, right? the teacher's, you know, mumbling on about some stupid project, and I'm like, oh, I got a good idea. So I'm, yeah. I start jotting it in the margin, uh, these little ideas and these little plot points, or these characters, uh, and then when I get home, I can really write it down. Um, but it, it's the best stuff that I think I write is when the words really speak to me. Right. Um, and then when I'm writing it, and I'm like, this is, this is effortless. Mm -hmm. That's when I know I have something good on my hands. Now, uh, kind of switching ends, did you do anything else besides writing and acting? Did you have any other uh, part in any other production besides that? I did in a, a, <laughs> the smallest way possible. Right. Um, and I'm so, I'm so particular and critical that I just kind of have to let go sometimes. So when I'm sitting there in front of the camera, I'm kind of like, should move that light a little to the yeah. left and maybe move the camera down. I don't know. But I, I just try to stay out of that because um, it was a class and the, the kids had to do what they had to do. Uh, so I wanted to give them the biggest opportunity they could. Um, but I did have a little uh, hand in it in the fact that, you know, um, there was the one thing that I really thought I kind of was like, okay, this has to be in it, was uh, a shadow of some Venetian blinds on the background. Mm -hmm. It was a really easy simple thing, right. but I'm like, we got to do this. Mm -hmm. So they grabbed uh, a gobo, um, which is just kind of like this giant sheet uh, or the, of metal or plastic or anything, wood, and it has holes in it, and it looks like Venetian blinds, and they put it in front of a light, and it did it just perfectly, and it you know, really set the mood. So what have you been up to recently? I mean, any, any new projects going on? Yeah, yeah. I've actually been involved in a big production this, uh, this semester. It's, uh, I, I wrote another script. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, and it's called Midland. And uh, I got the chance now to be able to direct it and pick out everyone from the, you know, the cast, the director of photography, uh, and the location. I mean, it, we already had a read-through, and we're going to actually be shooting uh, early November. Uh, so it's just right around the corner, and I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really excited for that as well because rumor has it I will be helping you with the production. That's very true. How have, do you feel about that? Having I'm such excited to have the very own Frank Kozel <laughs> from Showcase to be on as crew. I know, right? Uh, yeah. No, it, it should be really good. I'm excited to have... Um, we've had a lot of like good reception. Everyone I right. talked to about it, I kind of was worried about it. I'm like, well, will I have enough crew? Mm -hmm. uh, but it seems like whoever I talk to about it, they're all like, oh, how can I get involved? Or um, So I think it's going to be a, a great uh, production. And it's probably going to be out probably... Uh, end of the year, Christmas, uh, it'll be on YouTube, uh, Vimeo, uh, and so probably on the department's page as well. So. so a little Christmas gift for all of us. A Christmas gift for all, but it'd be hard me. I'm going up against Django and all these other big movies oh, coming out. Oh, let's not get into that. <laughs> all right, man. Ross, I want to thank you for coming in. No, and thanks for having me. Talking with us. Yeah, I had a great time. Showcase will be right back after this. Four, three, two. I'm J.R. Aquila. I graduated from Kutztown in 1982. Now I'm the event producer director here at Comcast Sportsnet Philadelphia. Hi, I'm Jim Bolden, and I graduated from the program in 1986. I'm now a business correspondent for CNN in London. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one.
Welcome back, everybody. It looks like we have time for one more video. Our final project is called Jump the Gun and was written and produced by Zach Camburn. This is a music video about two boys that are trying to escape the law. Let's see how this turns out. You know, this, this video, to me, it felt like it was almost reminiscent of the movie Catch Me If You Can. With Tom Hanks. Kind of like, yeah, with Tom Hanks and Love Leonardo it. DiCaprio. I don't care so much it was, for It was him. a good movie. But no, I like this video. I thought it was a really good kind of chase video, you know, had a really good soundtrack with it. And uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was, I thought it was well edited, you know. No, nah, nice I agree 100%. I really love the music. The music was fantastic. And uh, the video was really well done as well. But there's this one moment where the cop is going and they're like tracking them down and you know they go and they pick up the throw up and he tastes it. I thought that was hilarious. See that grossed you out. Why? It was kind of gross. I mean I hope they used oatmeal for that because I mean oatmeal is delicious. Throw up, not so much. Now Quaker oats. Oatmeal that has Love been thrown up? That might be interesting. I might try that sometime. Just kidding. Anyway, no but um, that was a little strange but there was a lot of different things in the video that happened were kind of quirky, a little a little unorthodox, but it made the video very interesting, very humorous, and very, very uh, interesting to watch. That's what I would say. Well, I agree 100%. I mean, what else is there to say besides it it's was, awesome? It's awesome. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for this episode. Until next week, I'm Kyle Ashenfelder. And I'm Frank Kozel. See, See you, you next time. time.